He also said, if you do not pick up your cross and follow me, you are not my disciple. Mm -hmm. And that may sound like some hard words, but they're not my word, brother. Mm -hmm. They're his words. So, it, what it, and, 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 and you can interpret that any kind of way you want to. The way, well, really not any kind of way, it's, you know, but the way I look at that is a crossless life is not a Christ-like life. In no way whatsoever. It's not. It's not a Christ-like life. He said, take up your cross and follow me. Mm -hmm. Take up your cross and follow me. I know that, you know, say, say Christ is over here, but here, here's, a, here's a cross, and I'm, you know, we, we'll pick up that cross, but then we want to set it down and just follow out to the blessing and the promises, and, and all, but that's not what he said. Right. Amen. He said, pick up your cross and follow me. And follow me. Okay, yes. keep carrying. Don't don't drop it off halfway. Keep carrying. You know, I believe and there's always been a fear of mine. And I don't know why. But I see so many people start good in their Christian walk. So many people start good in their Christian So many preachers I've seen on TV that I actually admire start so good but then they, they fall. And one of my constant prayers is, Lord, keep me from falling. Keep me from falling. Because I know it's possible in this case. I know it's possible. I know at any time, if, if I throw down that cross, sin can have dominion over me. It's not a past tense thing. It's a, a daily thing. That I got to constantly carry the cross. Now, I believe... Last week I shared with you what, what our vision is here. And I, I believe for that vision to come to pass, we have to be a people who carry the cross. There's no shortcuts. There's no other way around it. We're, we're not going to get there by programs or pragmatic right. thinking or anything. It, it, it has to be a life on the cross where the, the Spirit of God can work through us. It has to be. I'm not interested in anything else in this country. And I don't believe he is either. That's not what he what he's called us to. So, all right, now that I've said all that. In Luke 14, 27 is where he just said to take up your cross. <coughs> You know, salvation, like I said, is an ongoing experience. And the cross signifies so much more than I am forgiven. Now, if that's all it signifies, Miss Debbie, wonderful. That is so great that I am forgiven. But it, 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 there's so much more. There's so much more. It means so much more. In the cross, some of the things we shared last, last week, um, is, is that the cross has to do with the execution of a criminal. It has to do with the execution of a criminal. Today, we would compare the cross to something like a, a electric chair, lethal injection, in the cowboy days, a hangman, noose. It had to do, in, in Jesus' day, in Roman time, with the execution of a criminal. If you were on the cross, you were a criminal. No, no, no if, ands, or buts. And Jesus wasn't the only person executed. There were thousands of people executed this way. Thousands of people. But in Roman times, it was, it was something that happened so regularly, everybody knew that if they seen you with the cross, you're a criminal. Mm -hmm. Everybody knew that. And not only but was you a criminal, it was one of the most shameful things of that time. And not only was it one of the most shameful things, it was one of the most painful things. Yes. Now, the going to the cross, and, and this is just not the Lord, everybody who went to the cross, 
would, would, you just wouldn't go to the cross and be down to the cross and throw up there. You would be brought out in front of people, you'd be mocked, you'd be spit upon, you'd be beaten. But scripture says that there wasn't no one That's beaten right. like the Lord was beaten. That's that true. that his his vis visage was just so so messed up. He was marred more than any man, is what it says in Isaiah. <laughs> that he was marred more than any man. You couldn't hardly even tell he was a man. He was marred so much. So imagine the shame there. By the onlookers. Imagine how much shame it was. It all looked just like hmm? it was it, it was something to it. It wasn't a beautiful thing. There was nothing glorious about the cross. No. Paul said I'll glory in the cross, but naturally there was nothing glorious about the cross. You're a criminal. If you seen somebody on that cross, you would think to yourself, this man has done something to deserve this. Mm -hmm. Because he is a criminal. Now, the condemned man in Roman time, with monks, with bone, like I said, in 5.11, it talks about the, the offense of the cross. And the cross is not only shameful, but it was an offense to people. But you and I have to come to the term with the fact that we will embrace that. That we will embrace that. Yes. Embracing the fullness of a cross of the cross is a must if we're going to have growth as Christians. Yes. I'm going to say that again. Embracing the cross is a must if we're going to grow as Christians. It's a must. There's no other way around. <clears throat> Psalms 22, 14, and 15, they, they say a few things, but one thing they say is, my strength is dried up. And, and what it is, is a prophecy about being on that cross. It says, my strength is dried up. When, when you're on the cross, you become weak. You become weak. Your strength is dried up. Jesus surrendered his self to this one thing. Am I losing you? Okay. Jesus surrendered his self to this one thing. Now, it was through that weakness that he was able to go to the other side, Steve. I'm almost on today's message. This is all still last week's message. If you want to go listen to it, because it, it, it was presented a little bit better than just hitting the points today. But the prophet Isaiah said that there was nothing in him to desire. Right. And I believe Isaiah was talking about the shame of that cross. Because mm -hmm. you see people seen beaten, flogged, marred more than any man. Yet all these people who who you remember they came to him right before that? Then they were like, Will you at this time restore your kingdom to Israel? He's like, It's not for you to know the times of the season which mm -hmm. Father is putting you on authority. Mm -hmm. See, they were wanting to take him and put him on the throne, Steve. Mm -hmm. yep. They believe that he is the Messiah, and, and in their Jewish custom, they believe that he needed to be the king on the throne. They were still thinking naturally. Mm -hmm. And imagine this. You, you have this faith, you're following this guy, and then all of a sudden you're seeing him flogged, you're seeing him beaten, you're seeing him up on a cross, and you're seeing him die. Mm -hmm. Scripture says that as they, did none of them will go to the cross except John. They all went away saying we thought he was the Messiah. Yes. Imagine. See how that ruled this case? Imagine what they were thinking. Mm -hmm. They probably felt despair, hopeless. We thought he was a Messiah. We thought he was a Messiah. Hallelujah, he was a Messiah. We thought he was a Messiah. Not only did he take our sins, but he became the totality of them. He also became the totality of our shame. 
It was through that chain that he became the totality of our. Now we can understand why he said he bore our shame. Yes. He bore our grief. He bore our, our, our guilt. By his stripes, we are healed. You see, if he didn't take it on, we still got to face it. Right. But he did it. He did it. He took that on. It bore your shame, it bore your grief. It's amazing that the Son of God would lead this where, where the angels would cry out and worship Him. But He would leave that just to come and face shame, weakness, death, mockery, all that because He loved you. Because He loved you. Because He loved you, Mr. What? Something you go through, right? There's no other love like it. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine having that kind of love in you? Oh, but it's available to you. Amen. Amen. Now, the cross, let's, let's get to, to the faith message now. All right, the cross is designed to bring you to the end of your own resources. The cross is designed to bring you to the end of your own resources. When you embrace the cross, you share in that weakness. Yes. You no longer depend on your own strength, your own resources. You become totally dependent on God. When Jesus was on that cross, he was totally dependent on God. He was totally dependent on the Father. You know, Brother Sharon, we like to say stuff like, well, what would Jesus do? Jesus was our example. Who would he do? Well, he went to a cross. He went to a cross. He gave his life for others. He went to a cross. The cross will bring you to the end of you. Now, the cross... Not only did it, 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 it represent shame, weakness, and even at one point almost helplessness. It represented death. It represented death. If you went to the cross, you were a dead man. It represented death 2,000 years ago, and I still believe if I'm honored, it represents death today. It's not just a symbol. I mean, we got a cross on the front of this church. You know? I know people that wore crosses around their necks that live like devils, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's so much more than a symbol. If you heard most of the people on the video, it's a symbol of what they believe or not. No, no, no. It's so much more. It's so much more than a symbol. The cross lies at the very heart of the Christian message. At the very heart. There's no Christian message without the cross. There's not. The cross speaks of death. The cross speaks of execution. Now when you bear that cross, you are allowing that old man to be executed. You're allowing that old man to be killed. We said last week that all them old preacher always talked about dying to the flesh. That's what they talked about. And there was so much power on their life, Mr. Reed. So much power on their life. Mm -hmm. Today we talk about how God just wants to bless you and all this stuff. And, and we're still wrestling with the sin problem and everybody's still wrestling with the same sins over and over. You know why they're wrestling with the same sin, Mr. Randy? Because mm -hmm. they're still alive. Mm -hmm. They got saved and they're still alive. Mm -hmm. They haven't hit the cross yet. Amen. Because when you hit the cross, you're dead. Jesus said, carry your cross. Pick up your cross. Um, this has been my prayer for so long. For years I've been praying for God just to let me die in this place. Let me die. Satan is not my worst enemy. Gary's flesh is his worst Amen. Amen. If I can have that flesh under control, Satan couldn't 
wouldn't have no room to even come in. Back and kill the flag. Sin would no longer have no dominion on them. The gospel, if you're writing down stuff, write this down. The gospel is never intended to give you a spring cleaning. It was never intended to give you a spring cleaning. It was never intended just to brighten you up and make you a little more acceptable to God. No. The cross came to finish. Mm -hmm. It came to finish. Mm -hmm. That man with the same nature. He came to put a hand together. <clears throat> When I bear that cross and when I'm in Christ, I'm gone, Steve. That's right. I'm gone. When I bear that cross and I, I'm in Christ, I'm gone. The gospel message is the message of the cross. God never intended for it to be a mere cleansing. If you look in the Old Testament, they did a mere cleansing once a year. Mm -hmm. The cross is so much more than that. Mm -hmm. came to finish us. And, and most Christians even don't even have no idea it did. But if you get there, Steve, if you get there, you will experience resurrection power. If you get there, you'll be able to say, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives through me. If you get there, you'll be able to say, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in my mortal body. If you get there, you'll be able to say, just as he raised him, he'll raise me. If you get to the cross, you have reached your destiny. If you get to the cross, you have reached your destiny. You cannot be a new creation if the old man is still alive. It's not possible in this case. You cannot be a new creation if the old man is still alive. You cannot be a new creation until you meet that cross. The cross brings an end to it. And the cross is the door that leads to that scripture that says, I am new creation. Mm -hmm. There's no other way. That's right. There's no other way. Second Corinthians 5 17, everybody should know it by heart. But just in case, you know. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Mm -hmm. All things have passed away. All things are gone. Behold, all the coming. All things have passed away. We can't become a new creation unless the old, old us is gone. And the cross is what brings an end to the old you. The cross is the final solution for the problem of sin. It dealt with it once and for all, Brother Trent. The final solution. And the cross is what leads you to your resurrection. Yes. But resurrection on the other side of that cross. Okay. If any man be in Christ, old things have passed away. All become new. When you reach that place, you can say, I'm a new creation. I remember for years, I mean, a long time, I would quote that verse, well, I just quoted over and over and over. I claim it for myself.
myself because I listened to Kenneth Hagin and all them on that word faith stuff. Remember all of that? And I would claim that. I'd tell myself, here's your new creation in Christ Jesus. Here's your new creation in Christ Jesus. Here's your new creation in Christ Jesus. But guess what? I'd go out and live like the devil. <laughs> I would, because I wasn't dead. I was still alive. The old man was still alive in this case. Mm -hmm. And I claim it, I claim it, I claim it. You know what? Uh, 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 one more. And finally, one year, probably about nine years ago, ten years ago, the Lord told me fast, to go on a fast. And I love it. What do I fast for? That you'll die to your flesh. That's what I fast. And then, about a few years after that, I read that verse, and it hit me. This has come true in my life. I haven't went and done those things in a long time. It's hard for me to even believe I've done it. Because he walked all that way. He walked all that way. Now I want him to watch some more stuff for me. Miss Debbie. I'm never satisfied. I'm content in who I am in Christ, but I, I, I want to grow in this kind of thing. I want to constantly try to grow and get closer to Him and be a little more dead. You know, Paul said, I died daily. I died daily. Yes. Any man be in Christ, all things are passed away. All things are passed away. Hebrews 12, 2 says this. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne. Look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. For the joy that was set before him. I'm going to give a, a real quick lesson here on, on Hebrew. Is that all right? Mm -hmm. okay. The writer of Hebrews, which is, is, is really debated on who the writer is, I personally think it's in the writing of Paul and some of the revelations seem like Paul stuff, but I'm not 100% accurate. Um, some theologians, probably 50 degrees, they, they say it was. I've heard people said it could have been Luke. But personally, I, I think it, it's kind of, you know, in like Paul anyway. But, nevertheless, in Hebrews 1, the writer begins on how God spoke and how God speaks. Then, he goes on from there to show you how Christ Jesus is higher than anything. Yes. Then he begins to explain the reality of what you have in Christ by showing you patterns in the Old Testament, such as the tabernacle and stuff like that. Don't lose them, you right? Don't lose them. So then the writer, he brings you to chapter 6, and this is what he said. Now leave behind the doctrine of baptism, laying on the hands and such things, pursue perfection. He, then he goes on in, verse, in chapter 7, the to deal with Melchizedek, priest in the Old Testament, who they said was a type of shadow of Christ. Then he brings you to the place where Christ is now the eternal high priest. Not like the Old Covenant priest who had to offer blood yearly, cleansing sin yearly. The blood of animals can't take away sin. But he convinces you that only Christ Jesus died once and for all. He took away sin forever. It, and then when the writer reaches that point, he, he does something. He gives us a stern warning, Brother Trent. If we should turn away. If we should turn away. And I've never really really understood the scripture, but here's here what he said. He speaks of if he warns about walking away from salvation. In chapter 10, he speaks of him that despised Moses was destroyed. 
how much more punishment do you think he will get who treads on the foot of the cross, mm -hmm. right, despite to the Spirit of God and puts him to an open chain? From there, he begins to tell you in Hebrews 11, look at those who made it. Yeah. You know, you, you go on about how Abraham did this by faith and all these other. He goes on to tell you about, look at those who made it. Let them be your example. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. Let them be your example. Through faith, here's what they come with. Then in chapter 12, he says, Now listen, having these cloud of witnesses, make sure to look at Jesus. Make sure to look at Jesus. He is the one who will keep you off. Yes. And then he makes this amazing statement that we just read from the main circle. After all of, all of that, he, he led up to this. For the joy that was set before him, mm -hmm. he endured the cross. Mm -hmm. For the joy that was set before him, despite the shame. And now he sat down at the right hand of God. Mm -hmm. He sat down at the throne of God. You know, here's the thing. If you look only at that cross by itself, if you used to look only at the cross by itself and what it represents, the execution of a criminal, shame, guilt, weakness, death, if that was all we had to look at, I'd probably say, no thank you. Mm -hmm. Being honest, that's probably what I would have said. No thank you. Who wants shame? Who wants weakness? Who wants death? Nobody really wants that. But if you look beyond it, if you look at the other side of it, if you look at what's available on the other side of the cross, you'll say, I want it. Say I want it. You say I want it. Jesus endured the cross because he saw beyond the cross, Mr. He saw beyond. Looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross. If you can only see what's on the other side of the cross. You will accept it. And not only will you accept it, you'll desire it. Yes. You'll desire it. Amen. I desire what's on the other side of that cross so much, Brother Jerry. Yes. I, I've tasted what's on the other side. Oh, wow. I honestly have. And I, I just, I, I desire that one yes. Not so I could come up here and be a better preacher or, or anything like that. It's because there is nothing like there's nothing like just being with him and just feeling. there's nothing like you being a dead man and, and just have feeling the fullness of Christ in your life. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. If I was the only person on the earth, I would hope I was still desired. Mm -hmm. yes. Lord help me. Help us here. Amen. Jesus endured because he saw the other side. Mm -hmm. And to be honest with you, we must do the same. Yeah. We must do the same. Mm -hmm. You know, if I preach only weakness, shame, death, you'd probably say, no, thank you. Mm -hmm. But if I tell you on the other side of the cross is your resurrection, if I tell you on the other side of the cross is your new life, and it's a life of abundant. If I tell you on the other side of that cross is the power of God, mm -hmm. if I tell you on the other side of that cross is an eternal glory, mm -hmm. I believe you want it. You desire it. But there's no shortcuts. It comes to the cross. 
And now we see why a lot of people reject it. Why a lot of people reject it. I can now understand what Jesus said, narrow is a way that leads to life. Yes. Because who wants shame? Who wants to embrace shame? Mm -hmm. I can't think of nobody in their right mind that does naturally. Who wants to embrace just total weakness? That was probably one of the hardest things for me in becoming a Christian. Because I'm a man. I'm supposed to take care of all this stuff and do other. You know what I mean? That was so hard. To trust God with my family while we're trusting Gary and what Gary can do. Mm -hmm. It was hard. It's hard. When I don't see how it's going to happen, but I can't depend on my own resources and I have to trust Him. Mm -hmm. It's not an easy thing. It gets easier over time. You know. I think we live in a culture where we 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 look at, at weakness as just some kind of bad thing. But I just absolutely love being weak before him now. Because I know that that's where the strength is, Brother Trent. I know that yes. in in that in that state, in that condition, mm -hmm. that, that the power of God can now work in my life. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> so that's what the cross speaks of. And Jesus said, you cannot be my disciple unless you carry it. Right. Unless you pick it up. <clears throat> You have to embrace his shame, weakness, and his death. Paul said, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. Paul said, I will glory in the crucifixion and the cross. The world will mock you, shame you, even treat you like a piece of garbage, a piece of garbage and persecute you. You know, this ain't in my nose, but here's what I can't understand. I just cannot for the life of me understand it. Jesus said, Rejoice when they persecute you. That's right. He said that. Mm -hmm. Rejoice when you see those things. Yeah. But we try everything to stop persecution from coming our way. Mm -hmm. But we try legislation and everything else yeah. to stop persecuting. How legislation never going to stop a demon? I'll never know. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? I'll never understand. But Jesus said, rejoice, because they did this to me. Rejoice, because they did this to me. Rejoice, because they did this to me. I had a lady tell me the other day that I was one of their mom, just radical people that, I mean, she called me all kinds of things, but when I told her, I thought abortion was wrong. I said, but I love you. I'm not against you. I love all. Jesus loved anybody who's ever had one. Mm -hmm. But I was taught so down to. And all I could find was, listen, ain't nothing compared to what he went through. It's absolutely nothing. mock you, shame you, treat you like garden. But if we think we're about that, Brother Steve, we should get on our knees. Amen. That's right. If we think we're above persecution, we should get on our knees. Because something isn't right. Being a Christian and Christ-like involves a lot of things Christ went through that just aren't that fun. Yep. Carry our cross and follow him. If he suffered, we can suffer. But there's a great promise in Scripture. There's a promise that I grabbed years ago, Steve. 
here's what it says. This promise brought me through so much. <clears throat> and I may not even be here right now if it wasn't for this verse I'm about to share with you. You say, I believe Christ suffered. And it won't hurt for us to suffer a little bit for him either. It's the cross. Because there's something great on the other side. And here's what he said. After you have suffered a while for Christ, the God of all grace, who has called you into his e eternal glory in Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, he will perfect you. Yes. After you have suffered a while, he will establish you. After you have suffered a while, he will strengthen you. After you suffered a while, he will settle you. I have to look it up. I got it wrote down right here. It's in, um, you know what? I'm terrible with the address. I never read the numbers. Yeah, I think it is. I think it is. But I never read the numbers. I always just, I just read through. I never read the chapter of verse. Never. The only time I look at chapter and verse is as I'm writing the message most of the time. That's the only time I read it. But it says, that after you suffer the walk of Christ, the God of all grace, who's called us into His eternal life, by Christ Jesus, He'll perfect you. He will establish you. He will strengthen you. And he will settle you. He will settle you. You know, my life was in such turmoil. I really didn't care about the being perfected. I really didn't care about the being established. I just wanted to settle in my heart. First Peter 5.10. I just wanted to settle in my heart. That was it. And that's what the cross is. It'll bring you to that place.